Okay, Sergio, we are on. We are live on Facebook. We're live. But... We're cooking. Good. Uh, good evening. Or good. Wait, what time is it over there? So I know we just had like uh, daylight savings time. Yes. Um. So right now it's one twenty one p.m. here. What time is it over there? It's eight p.m. here. So we we caught up with you guys, or you caught up with us. Depends on the perspective, as always. <laughs> um, we already switched in uh, last week. So. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Um, I I don't like it. I don't enjoy daylight savings time at all. It's always a, conf a mess. And when you're dealing with people that are all over the world, it's even messier. It's always like, oh, I'm so sorry. One of, what somebody, at least there's always one person who's like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, um, yeah. yeah, I'm not a big fan of it. But how are you? How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. It's um, as I said, we, uh, we 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 got used to it last week, but it's already very dark early. So I don't know. That's winter time, and my camera is losing the focus. It seems. Let's let's sit a little bit different. So yes, I I um, in preparation for this uh, meeting, you sent me some some nice list of topics, and um, thank you for for letting me choose one. No, of course. I mean, I think that's there's so much we can talk about, and um, I think something that. Has, can happen is that because it's such a big field and at the same time everything's very related um i think things can get kind of muddy and muddled and we can talk about the same things but we can also just miss out on certain things because we are not very being very specific so um yeah i think it's great that we're going to keep them shorter and we're going to keep them more focused on stuff that's going to be um people can can think about better on their own um and I've been, I was, I mean, I've been, I talk about this all the time, you know, like I talk about emotions and, and healing and, and becoming a better person each day for myself and for my relationships. Um, I was having this talk with my wife yesterday. I think we were talking about spirituality and it's such a broad word. Um, it's such a weird thing to describe because I feel like everybody, a lot of people have different definitions for it. Um, but we came to a conclusion that she came to it and it made me think of something you came to, which was that emotions are spiritual. And uh, you have you have a video. You have a video with um, an interview with somebody else on your on your channel on YouTube, which is really, really interesting. Um, I, I was just listening to it again when I first met you right before I met you. I was listening to it and I loved it. I enjoyed it. Um, and you touch on a lot of topics which are um, focused a lot on peak states and, you know, the, the importance that our emotions play in how we relate to others and situations and how things can be different when you begin to work and not be triggered by certain things. That was one of the last things that stood out. Um, yeah, it was, I think it's, there's so much that our emotions play a part of when we relate to other people. Well, yeah, indeed. So, um, yeah, that was a fun video that I did with Rose there. Um, it, I think it's a year old or something. So it's uh, yeah, but it's still it's still valid. So uh, we haven't changed much. Humanity hasn't changed much. There has been happening lots of stuff in in the world. But um, interestingly, if if you look at all these uh, things that happen and have like a little bit not this filter of being like. Um, a victim to whatever happens, but you just take a little bit of, yeah, a distance and look at that from a distance, then um, it's it's very fairly easy to see that many reactions you see are really reaction based on unconscious emotions, mostly. Okay, yeah. so people fight with each other, they discuss with each other. And, um, and, for example, they don't want to lose their face, uh, or their honor or whatnot. And, and Actually, if you if you reverse that, you look inside that person, and then that person is afraid, afraid of um, being the victim, afraid of being um, uh, vulnerable to something or something. And uh, and this is this is most of the time we don't discuss that in our Western world. We're not like going, how do you feel, or, or we just do it to just start a conversation, but not really going in deep in how a person feels because. What happens if, if you ask me how do you do and then and then I say, well, you know, I'm a little bit sad and so on. That's like it's like not a conversation starter. It's actually a breaker, right? So you, yeah. you're not you're not you're not starting, but you might be even overwhelmed by by the reaction the other person has, and it might trigger stuff in you. So 
when when somebody comes up with their emotion, then you might also get emotional, yeah, because there's there's certain things that um, certain topics many people get emotional about, yeah, yeah, and then if these topics are triggered, then um, well, a rational discussion is not possible, yeah. So yeah. then then we're just in the emotional state, and and if that is uh, unpleasant, we resort to avoiding it, sweeping it under the rug, or even fighting or running away or something like this. Yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. I think I think anybody who has <laughs> any form of relationship knows that very well at some point, right? Um, it makes me think of when people aren't don't allow themselves to become close to other people. Uh huh. It, it can also. I feel like a lot of the reasons for that is because they are not. Um, and I, I mean, I've been, I've been there before. Like, I've not allowed myself to get close to relationships because I was going to get hurt, right? Because I was going to have to be myself, because I was going to have to show vulnerability, uh, because um, a million things, and they all have to do with our emotions. Uh, yes. They all have to do with our emotions. And, um, and our fear of our emotions as well. When you when you say, for example, when you say that you, you didn't show yourself because you were afraid of being vulnerable, okay? So to open yourself up, you're being afraid of... Uh, or something what might happen when you open yourself up when you be vulnerable right yeah no exactly um but it's sometimes it's not even like it's not always conscious it's not always um you know you can analyze it for a long time but it's not always like there's there's layer after layer after layer of reasons for it it's never like just this one case scenario um and yeah, it's very difficult and it's really interesting. And it makes me think of a lot of um, kind of the topic that I, I want to kind of talk about today. Um, and that's in a way just that sometimes we don't know uh, why why we feel these things or why they happen. Um, one of those things is like I I went on um, I went on the Internet and I just decided to ask uh, communities on Reddit questions. And one of the questions that came up you know, about mental health and things that people don't understand uh, and that they're not aware of or why, why you know, it happens is, um, is panic attacks. I One of the questions somebody gave to me that I really wanted to bring to you was, um, the question was, why do people have panic attacks? We are not in danger, but we feel that we are. Um, but it's not just that, like, we may feel we're in danger. It is like this overriding of like our nervous system that just goes I don't want to say haywire because I'm sure there's a reason for it but it's just very powerful thing you know I've had I've had maybe like 15 20 panic attacks in my life or what I consider to be panic attacks uh and they're you know they haven't been something that I would say like causes issues in my life but they haven't been pleasant they, it's not a fun thing to experience. Um, when I was, when I was, a, yeah, when I was younger, my my friend and I were in high school, and we both had panic attacks. His were a little different than mine, but um, you know, whenever we were like, it was always like late at night, and when we were having a panic attack, like he would call me or text me and be like, "Hey, are you up?" So we had each other to like help each other out. But even still, to this day, like we don't understand. We don't know why we had panic attacks. Um, have you have you had panic attacks before? I have. I have had a panic attack, and it's uh, as you said, it's not really pleasant. Um, um, what what I would I was wondering, um, how did you get out of it? Um, how did I get? Uh, you're talking about like during? Yeah. Well, what, how did it end? Bef we we will cover the start afterwards, but. Just before we go to the start, let's let's see how it ended. So it's weird. Um, I'll I'll give you a progression as I got older. Um, mm -hmm. The first one's gonna sound crazy, but I um, I think it was just a way to feel better. What I would do is, I thought it was like in a in a non crazy way, in a non delusional way. I thought it was like the devil attacking me and like I knew it wasn't but it was a way to get angry so what I would do is I would like flick off the ground <laughs> like as if it was like um I don't know how to put it it was just my way to express this anger I felt that feeling this way um like I, I don't 
I'm not really like a, I don't really believe in like the devil. So, um, but I don't know. It was just how my 15 year old brain tried to figure this feeling out. And, and eventually like what we would say is like, you know, these things don't last 15 minutes, like we'll be fine. Uh, and they didn't. So eventually that would happen. And then I realized I had a trigger when I got older. My trigger was like, if it was very late at night and I was on my bed and I was looking at my phone, the first symptom would be like my phone suddenly felt like it was like miles away. Mm. Like it was like, I got this like, um, like tunnel vision almost like it just felt really far away. And then I was like, Oh crap. <laughs> so I would try to put my phone away. Um, and you know, I've had them, I've had them even up until like last year, maybe even this year, but they're very rare. Um, I, right now what I do is I try to just stay present with that feeling uh, sometimes it's not just a feeling though, right? It feels like things are going really fast and chaotic. Um, and I'll just, I'll tell my wife, like, I'm, you know, I'm having a panic attack and can you just like hug me? Can you just be here with me? Um, and that's honestly, that's the best support. Just feeling like you're, you're countering that with like some safety or with some loving space. Um, that makes it a lot better. And I feel like it goes away a lot quicker too. So just, yes. That's my awesome. progression. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah. did I understand first? At first, you just lived it. You just uh, went with the emotion, just outlived or lived, expressed your emotion. Is that the first part? Yeah. You didn't get yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. And then you you progressed, and now you, there's on one hand there's knowledge from you that it doesn't last for long and it will go over because you had had you had had them so many times, and now you yeah. have your wife. Okay? Yeah. 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 That is awesome. And now let's let let me just start. Uh, over and because the question was why do we have them basically yeah and um and then we'll be, uh, go back to the to the end um so the interesting thing was in the question itself it basically said that this question itself had the reason or part of the reason in it yeah because the question if the, the second part of the question would you like to read it again so so I have the words. yeah uh, i'll read it all why do people have panic attacks we are not in danger but we feel that we are Correct. We are not in danger, but we feel that we are. Who says we are not in danger? Uh, I guess like our, our rational brain says we're not in danger. Yes. Right? Exactly. Where, where, where we're at rationally says we're not in danger. And, and then our, our, our cognitive mind, our rational mind says, well, I'm sitting here in the room. I'm chatting with Sergio. Why would I get the tunnel vision and the panic attack right now? Yeah. So um, there's, there's no danger. There's no lie. And there's hopefully no... Uh, heaven falling onto my head or whatever whatever crazy thing might happen um yeah and and uh, and there's no reason but we feel like it so the second part there's the feeling there's an emotion there's something going on inside of me mm -hmm. which is which is not really explainable to the situation i'm in right now okay. right and that's that's like a trigger. So something happens, okay? Like you, for you, it was watching your phone, and for another person, it might smell a different cologne or just having having a thought or something. And and then part of us gets triggered into a trauma. So part mm -hmm. of us is not actually here in that moment that we are right now, okay? The body is right now in that moment, but part of us goes back to a, to a horrible, horrible. Um, uh, uh, moment in our development yeah and development mm -hmm. means in utero so before birth or afterwards so that that doesn't really matter if it's if it's if it's a moment after we've been born we have been existing before being born of course we didn't get an id card we didn't get a name we didn't get birth certificate and stuff like this but we already existed okay inside mm -hmm. our mom right and right. and stuff can happen inside our mom and and the, the interesting thing is, until we turn four, five, six years old, you can look at your first memory, perhaps that was with five or six years, basically, stuff happened, but you don't really memorize it, okay? So yeah. there might have been a person yelling at you wearing that cologne that this other person you are now meeting also wears, and that's why you, inside of you, part of you, gets back into that moment, into that memory, mm -hmm. remembers the feeling, and then the body reacts to that feeling, reacts with shaking or reacts with some sort of reaction. And then the second part, the second stage it comes and the mind says, huh, what's going on? Okay. And then if the mind is 
is really resilient and settled and, and, and that's something you have developed over the time as you've uh, told it. You have, you're getting so used to having panic attacks so your mind knows that's not rationalized. It's, it, it will go over. It will just blow yeah. over. Okay? So at first the mind doesn't know. So the mind also gets in panic and then there is panic from the mind, panic from the body because it, it is actually remembering something from the past and then there is some sort of circle. Okay, and it goes further and further and further and further and further, which is the panic attack, okay, which is like a vicious circle going on until something shuts down. Okay. It can be either that we lose consciousness and fall fall down, and then there's like a like a reset on your mobile phone on your computer, a little yeah, bit like that. Yeah. Or, and now that's the real important part, until somebody calms us down. And that can be either an external person, that can be our mommy, our daddy. Yeah. That can be our teacher or that can be our partner. Okay. And there's nothing else to do for that partner. And that's why I'm why I'm saying that, why it's so important. If you see somebody having a panic attack, okay, first of course, protect yourself. If that person has a panic attack and a weapon, don't go there. <laughs> Call the police. Okay. But if it's somebody in acquaintance and you know that 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 you can be with them and, and they respect you and they love you, you just hold them. Okay, you just be with them. You don't even have to hug them. It's just being at the side and perhaps holding hand or just just being there and talking very, very, very calmly. That will help that person or that that trigger to basically fade off. Okay, grab a sense of reality, feel safe again, and that's that's the key word here: feeling safe. Because that part that remembers the past is not feeling safe. Mm -hmm. And if you somehow manage to feel safe again and your partner does that, or, and that's the advanced technique, doing it for yourself, okay? That's what I think you are doing a little bit now because you have had so many experiences with it. Now you can be present with yourself. You can yeah. say, okay, yeah. I'm present to that emotion. Okay, that's not nice, but okay, I'm okay, yeah? So basically the second stage is not fired. Okay, the first stage, you feel the trigger, but the second stage, the mind gets not in panic, and so it doesn't really develop that cycle you just observe and then yeah. you, you 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 imagine for example that part of you that is in panic as a as a small child as an inner child yeah in a boy in a girl whatever you think mm -hmm. and you hug it okay and you're imagining hugging that part of you being present being um being very gentle with that part and you will notice that that part will slowly 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 relax and then the panic attack is over Okay. You're ta you're talking about an inner child though. So like imagining that the kid like a like a little kid, a little you is having that reaction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's um, just a way to visualize it. It's it's not yeah. necessarily, yeah, there are people who say we have 14 inner children, there's one, I don't know, whatever. It's just a way to visualize um to to for you to see that part of you that is having panic. Um yeah holding it and perhaps Got it's it. not one part it might even be multiple parts okay yeah and the more parts are in panic the the the, the, the stronger the panic attack obviously uh, is and and uh and, and it's getting more and more difficult to have that that healthy part of you that rational part of you being present for all of these parts but um yeah that's that's one way to get out of it okay yeah it's good to have as many tools as possible um so uh, like when I was when I was younger, like uh, we've we've had this conversation. We've had I've had the like, you know, it's such a wonderful um, use of knowledge to know about the triune brain model and knowing that there are different parts of us that um, kind of think within us and uh, uh, communicate with the world differently. Um, and you know, the fact that when I was younger, just just having the tool to say this will pass it might not have been you know everything it might not have been the thing that made the feeling go away but it definitely um made made things better you know it made things a lot better uh so the more tools it's always it's always great um you were just talking about an inner child um kind of to again make that that feeling safe um and when when I think about like doing inner work and the idea of you know of beginning to heal and and doing things that'll 
make your personal growth with yourself, with other people, with how you feel, your health in general. Um, I, I, I remember the first thing I, um, the first, well, I think the very first therapy session or no, 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 maybe like the fourth or fifth, but the session I had in my life was with uh, somebody who talked a lot about, uh, let's just talk inner work. The inner work he talked about was the inner child work. And it was this idea of like hugging a child, you know, seeing this child in front of you who's been hurt by maybe like a situation we might've been talking about in the, you know, 30 minutes beforehand and trying to see that, that child and how they might feel and kind of hugging them and giving them love. Um, I feel like it, creates a sense of compassion for yourself it can begin to do that um i i personally didn't feel like i benefited much from it outside of that you know like i'm um i'm somebody that deals with um like one of my big issues is like i i just had a bad relationship with my father and he's very absent and so like i in some way i carry that without even knowing almost like a panic attack i don't know why they happen uh there's a lot of things about how I deal with it that are just kind of hidden from me. And um, I'm sure that's like, maybe I'm not ready to deal with the pain yet or or whatever, but that wasn't very helpful to me in the long run. You know, like I didn't hug my, my child self as a kid about how I feel. And then suddenly like it all went away. Um, Is that, you know, you being somebody who helps clients, in many ways, because you've helped me a lot and you have a lot of tools. Is that one of the tools you've ever used? Do you still use it? Do you use it with certain people? How does that work for you? Well, now I'll tell you a little secret. So as a therapist, um, you also get once in a while, you get triggered, okay? So um, that is that is just the, how things are. And, and You mean uh, therapists are human beings as well? <laughs> I don't know, possibly. It's a shocker. <laughs> um, and so, so um, we have that uh, uh, that uh, loving yourself exercise. I also have on that YouTube channel. You you know that, right? Yeah, it's uh, a favorite of mine. Great, and and that's basically the same as as loving your inner child. It's just a different way of doing it. Yeah, when you project that golden, warm rain, summer rain coming down, and and uh, it creates that loving feeling inside of you, and it's not healing any traumas. It's basically just stalling them or bringing them on pause or turning them off again. Depends on how how intense you can create that loving feeling. Yeah, and um, and so it doesn't help in the long run. That's a tool for if in a situation, for example, when I'm in in a situation with you and I'm feeling something rising up, I would immediately switch to that mode and um, hug myself internally, give myself this this uh, loving yourself energy to basically mm-hmm. calm myself down, okay? And then after the chat, after the session or something, I would um, use the other tools to work on that trauma, yeah? work on that inner, inner, do that inner work basically, which will then um, um, get rid of that problem for good, okay? So it's okay. not a way to, to feel better uh, uh, for a long time, yeah? Sustainably or something. It's just a way to very quickly cope with the situation and I think that's the thing you want to do, okay? When you're in a panic attack, first of all, you want to cope. You want to get out of it. And then you can sit down yeah, when everything is quiet and we are in the safe room, actually, and not while driving a car or wherever you might have that panic attack. For you, being in bed with the phone, that's that's nice, but people might get it in different places where it's not yeah. good to... to people to, and... Yeah. yeah. So that you, that you just get out of it and then... You go and see a therapist, and you work on on the on the issue with tools that do 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 change your reality. Okay. Okay, but I so the inner child in there. I I didn't hear anything about the inner child work in there. Is that that's it seems separate, right? Like inner child work is oh. it's not necessarily a tool for trauma healing, as opposed to like what you were saying, just maybe to help yourself feel better in that moment. Well, that depends on what you call for inner child work. The, the thing with, with all these uh, inner work, uh, uh, trauma healing and psychotherapy and therapy itself is there's very, very, if you know many techniques, you will see there are many similarities. Okay, there's a little bit mm-hmm. of this and this and this and they, they 
either they copied or it's just this because that's how things work okay so they figured out from a little bit different perspective and they looked from that perspective and the inner child work from my perspective is to use parts that are inside of you okay that you can identify because they are not in harmony and not in unity with with you okay so from my point of view we are, we are many parts okay we have many awarenesses and these awarenesses um, somehow should work seamlessly together but they don't they fight and many people know that in hollywood they have the angel and the 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 the, uh, the devil here and then the angel says something the devil says something okay you know that as, as a picture in hollywood movies and um and then that that's just a way to show um what's going on inside of us okay so we are even though we appear as one person in the mirror and, and we think that we are one person we are not okay we have different awarenesses different experiences that are in conflict with each other and you can call these inner child you can call these parts you can call these ego states you can call these whatever you want okay and then you define a little bit there and you find a little bit there for example in, in peak states what we most most of these things we can uh, we can subsumize under the trine brains okay so um, it's just a different word and there is a way to just calm them down yeah, using the loving yourself technique or there are ways to actually find the trauma the reason why they overreact the why they react this way the they react yeah, why they react so strongly and uh, and heal that trauma and then that trigger is going to be gone if you really do it and and one way to see if, if you really did it well is to see if you after doing the exercise get to a state of being calm peaceful and emotionally light okay that's basically the the thing so when you when you think about a situation and you say oh, my heart rate goes up and i get heat get up and i really oh, there's tension and so on and then you do the work and later you're like okay yeah i have the memory i don't have that emotion then you actually if you're that calm peaceful and emotionally light about that situation you know that you heal that trauma hmm yeah that's great yeah. yeah yeah and that's 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 and sometimes it's difficult because there's so many emotions I and mean, sometimes there's something in the head there's something in the chest there's something in the belly and the whole thing is going on and then you're like okay what do i do first and that's why you get a therapist okay so that the yeah. therapist helps you to isolate the the one that okay there's certain things that influence each other and then uh, you just work on one work on the next and eventually you come peaceful and light with that situation yeah, yeah that makes so, sense. Uh, and 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 ma many people also think that there's just an emotion so we always use the sats rating i think we already talked about that in in, in our our podcasts here yeah. um that an emotion is there it can be either negative or positive um and positive obviously we like <laughs> it feels good and it's light okay and and the negative feel usually heavy and uh, and they're not that and they make us tense and even though there's like an emotion like fear and anger and powerlessness and helpfulness and sadness, that is the quality, but there's a quantity, okay? And we measure that from zero, no emotion, to 10, the worst or the heaviest, the, the, the worst that you can ex uh, imagine. And that is basically intensity, okay? And, and usually there's one emotion to one trauma. And if you get rid of that trauma, then that emotion is gone and you feel CPL, you feel calm, peaceful, and emotionally light. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, how do I put this? I feel like talking about all these things, well, well let me back up. You mentioned um, that you might, we might feel, you know, certain negative sensations around our emotions, like feeling tense and stuff like that. And you also mentioned um, when we feel happy, you know, we might feel calm and light. Are there are there parts in this scenario? Should we not feel also, you know, happy, but be more in like a like a centered place? So like both positive and negative. Should we always kind of be in this more like calm, neutral state? Or do you think having like joy or these sensations that are more positive and they come with their own feelings are also um in a spiritual sense in a personal growth sense sometimes um a way to not be just calm peaceful and light where we're not triggered either positively or negatively 
Well, that, that's a difficult question. From my work, I see people who are basically always very negative. Okay, they're depressed, yeah. they're sad, they're triggered, they're, uh, there's much tension in their lives. And, and then we have the basically the neutral and the very positive, okay? And if okay. that person yeah. who's, 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 who's so sad, uh, I don't know, for getting a lottery ticket or, or having a vacation he wanted or she wanted to have or, I don't know, taking drugs or alcohol, gets here, that's like, oh, my God, that's what I want to be, okay? That's happy life, blissed out and so on. And that's where they basically want to be. But both of these are extremes, Okay. And, yeah. and, and the Institute for the Study of Peaks says we know we have trauma, yeah, feeling negative, and we have mm -hmm. positive trauma, feeling very positive. For example, I had one positive trauma one day when I, when I was very enthusiastic to solve riddles. Okay, I was like, oh my God, I need to solve riddles. Please give me problems. I need to solve them and, and, and give me riddles. So, and I was really getting on people's nerves <laughs> because I was like, please come on. And then um, I got just the hint, okay, that might be positive trauma. I said, well, but it feels so good if I, if I, if I, if I do that riddle and so on. And, um, and then I healed it. And then from here, basically, I went to the middle, okay? okay. Now it's nice to do it once in a while, but I don't have to do it, okay? That's the difference. So I'm trying to always try to find a neutral place. And from that neutral place, swing a little bit to the positive, swing a little bit to the negative, and come back, Okay. So okay. positive, okay. there's sun, and sun goes away, there's night, and there's rain the next day. Okay, rain, not so great. I need to take an umbrella with me and come back to the negative. But it's mm -hmm. always swinging around the neutral place, yeah. and it's not yeah. here, not in the extremes. Okay, gotcha. so for gotcha. me, the, the definition is of trauma on, from the Institute for the Study of Peaks is always everything which is not calm, calm peaceful, emotional light is trauma. And that's basically okay. here. Here yeah. you're calm, peaceful, and emotionally light. Yeah. And then you're here, you're either completely blissed out, yeah, or here and you're very negative. And this is both trauma. And here we go here. Okay. And from yeah. the physiology point of view, um, makes complete sense. I mean, everybody who has done drugs knows that there is a, a sort of um, um, effect that you're getting tolerant to the drug. Okay, at first, yeah, it's, yeah. you just need one milligram, then you need two, three, five to get the same results. And mm -hmm. because the body can't produce that sensation anymore. So the, the zero part, basically, the calm, peaceful light, I think that is the standard um, for most human beings. Okay, that is the standard. And, uh, and if you are feeling good, you're going this way and you're swinging back and you're swinging to negative. I don't know, something happened in your job and you're coming back. That is, that is normal, but not these two extremes. And then that's, that's like for the standard human being. And then there might be, but I have not met them yet, um, people who are completely blissed out, okay? Because they are in some completely different states of consciousness. And that's yeah, why yeah. we call that the peak states. Mm -hmm. um, there are states of consciousness. There's regular consciousness you and I are in. And then there might be a more elevated states of consciousness where you perhaps can see the future, I can see the past, you can perhaps do whatever crazy psychic abilities that come with these states. I don't know, okay? I don't know. But in, in these states, there is, for example, the one state why the Institute was founded was because the founder was looking for the beauty way state, a state where you're in complete harmony with nature and everything is beautiful, okay? You can yeah. even see in my computer screen, you can see the beauty of life in the computer screen. Okay, yeah, so yeah. sounds a little bit crazy for regular consciousness, but for those people, obviously, this what I'm just what I just said does not really apply because they are calm, peaceful, and light. But they, while they're calm, peaceful, and light, are in an elevated state, and everything is beautiful, and mm -hmm. life is in harmony. Okay, and it's not that like was like I how I was that I wanted to use uh, solve some riddles, mm -hmm. okay, or that you felt depressed or felt negative or felt sad. Yeah. Alone, yeah. whatever, whatever. So that's on one plane, okay. And I think for most people, it would be already a big achievement to feel calm, peaceful, and light. Most people don't know what that state is, so that's already a very nice state to be. And mm -hmm. then when you when you actually continue doing the inner work from that inner peace that you have, you get to elevated states of consciousness. And yeah, that's that's the personal journey. That's something I can attend with and I can help you with, but. 
so far we don't have a way to give you duty way. We're looking for it, but not yeah, yet. yeah. Um, that's um, that makes me think a lot of Eckhart, Eckhart Tolle in his book, The Power of Now. And if anybody's right, I mean, it's a pretty powerful book, but just for those who haven't, it's the idea that he was a very, like he was dealing with a lot of depression. And then one day he realized, what was it that he, he was saying? Like he realized there was a duality within, it, within himself and he was talking to like him as if it was somebody else. Once he realized that it was a big change and the next day he woke up feeling like a changed man and just in this present state for years. Um, he Actually, I met Eckhart Tolle one day, but not personally. He was just on stage in front of me. Uh, so it's it's sad that Eckhart has the beauty way. And I, yeah. I, if I remember correctly, in his book, in the first chapter, first or two chapters, he said, I can't live with myself anymore, or something like this. And then he questioned himself, who is I and who is myself? Who's talking to who and who's observing who? And why can that observe the other? And who's having the issues there? And yeah. that yeah. made him jump into beauty way. I don't think that's going to happen for everybody, um, yeah. but no, that's that's how he, did, he describes it. But he is in yeah. beautiful, beauty, beauty, uh, beautiful state. I think. I um, I went to Florida last year with my family, and as we were getting ready to go back home uh, here in, in San Antonio, we, um, we like I decided that I was going to kind of take charge because. Um, Sometimes when I travel with my family, I don't know if this happens to anybody, but like they they take charge. My parents will take charge of like the whole plan, and and it can get kind of boring when you're not in charge of anything you do. So like I'm a you know I'm this was like the story for a long time, and I, I'm an adult now, and so I can kind of make plans. And one of the things we did was we found I found this like kind of res like small reservation uh, near Fort Lauderdale, and. It was this, um, I don't know, not like a sanctuary, but it was just like this area within the city. There was like this beautiful park, but um, it was secluded and it had like you could, it, it, it had a list of like animals. It was like bridges, walkways, bridges, just trees everywhere. It was like a little swamp within the city. And um, there were animals, like all kinds of animals, right? So you had to be careful. Um, and except there weren't really crocodiles, but you had to still be careful. But um, and I remember as I was leaving, there was uh, the, the name of the person who founded it, and it was this woman. And I remember it said something like, you know, it was she died, but it was like she walked in she walked in beauty way. And yes. uh, and it made me think of the fact that there was this person who had this plot of land, who kept it as it was. And allowed people to go into it, and it it felt dangerous, but at the same time wonderful being in this place in the middle of like the city, and um, there was this combination of like just feeling, like honestly feeling in nature within a place that maybe shouldn't exist, and it made me re think of of. So for me, it was parallel to how I see society and how I see just people in general. And that is that most of us are living in this place where um, our life reflects how we are feeling inside. Our societies, in a way, reflect how we're feeling inside. And that, that you know, society isn't perfect. Civilization isn't perfect. How we live, our, our cities aren't perfect. And there was this one part in nature that was just, like, untampered with. Um and so, like, it must have been very interesting to know this woman because, it, you know, and it made me think, of course, of, of the beauty way state that you guys talk about. Um, and again, it leads me back to to inner work and emotions being spiritual because um, I feel like all, all our lives and are just they're ruled by our emotions. They're ruled by, like, what we feel yes. and what we don't know yeah. we're feeling. And it's just crazy because because there's just there's just so much. You know, I, I have friends I've talked to. I don't like, I hate the word trauma. I like the way you define it. I like the, the way the Peak States uh, Institute and the team defines it, which is like anything that doesn't make you feel calm, peaceful, and emotionally light. Yes. Because, because I feel like trauma, when you say trauma, there are people that will just say, you know, I never had trauma. Like, well, yeah, yeah, right. Or, or, I, or they say, like, I've had great parents. And, you 
unfortunately for us, like, you know, life isn't black or white. There's gray everywhere. It's mostly gray. So you can have a great life. You could have had a great childhood, but you could have also had like a pretty like poor childhood. You could have had a lot of negative experiences and, and painful stuff. And that's just talking about the things that that we happen to experience as we're con- like c- we can consciously perceive it and remember it and and have defined so far, uh, you know, with through memory and through psych- through current psychology. You know, there's but- more work. Go ahead. Yeah, it's 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 pretty easy. So, um, from my point of view, everybody has trauma because everybody has had a development, yeah, from in utero, the the even development of the egg and the sperm. There are so many development steps, and something will go wrong because that's what happens. Okay, but it doesn't mean that this what goes wrong has an effect on your life. Okay, so that is for from the perspective of peak states during the biological development, things may go wrong because they can and mm-hmm. they can be corrected. Okay, we have certain uh, correction me- mechanisms inside of us, and we have one of the most, uh, yeah, most used correction me- mechanism is just to ignore that. Okay, and just to continue. So you have one cell and you build another cell and you build another cell and all goes bigger. And if one cell has a small functioning, well, you just ignore it. And eventually you will kill that cell off and, and, and therefore you have your immune system. And um, But if something went wrong, it, that does not necessarily mean that you are influenced by it in life or that you are influenced by that, what went wrong in a way that made, makes your life horrible. So imagine just for example, because something went wrong, I have my hair blonde, okay? Okay, that means I can't possibly use the same clothing as you do because our hair color don't match, okay? So it doesn't look that great. But that might be just as a result from from something going wrong in biology, but I'm still alive, I can still live, I just need to use other other clothing, other, other colors, and that's it, okay? So there's not every trauma that you have needs to be healed. That's really important. Many people think that I want to be completely healed, 100%. That is almost impossible. I I feel like you'd have to be alive forever. Like you have to be immortal for that to happen, even if you could. Perhaps then you are immortal when you when you heal every trauma. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, but it, it, that that does. I mean, that's not really practical. I look from it from the practical point of view, and, and with peaks, it's work. It's very practical. Okay, we are not looking at the big history. We're just looking at the um, the issues we need to work on right now, and then eventually we go deeper and deeper and deeper, and we heal the trauma, and then we continue living. And if our trauma, if something doesn't bother us anymore, okay, in our lives. Okay, it's it's fine if 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 somebody is taking the right of way when I'm driving and I get upset and I'm not ending up in road rage, but I get upset, but I'm still safely driving the car. If I don't feel that is bothering me in my life, why need I heal that trauma? Yeah, for sure there is a trauma behind it because you get really upset. But why do I need to heal the trauma? Okay, if the consequences are not that strongly but if your consequences are strongly you can't go to work you can't find a partner or you're always having relationships with that break up or you're you're mistreating your kids or whatever that's something you might want to change okay that's the first the first motivation the second motivation is to see how far you can go okay to find new elevated states of consciousness to feel really great okay there's a book called the finders and they describe um fundamental well-being so Being yourself, if that is great, good. But there are ways to feel better, okay? And you have to do some work, and that is the inner work. You have to do some inner work to feel better. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're up for it, perfect. If you are not, also good, okay? That's that's your choice and your personal choice. And um, for me, it was really important to know that these techniques exist so I can change something and not a victim to something that happened in the past. Yeah, okay? and that is that is really the empowering thing, and the empowering thing as well is that eventually you will get the hang of that standard protocol, um, standard techniques that you can use on your own. You don't need a therapist for that, and then you can even help yourself. Yeah, and that's something really important for me that you not always need a therapist to do the work, but you you will get the hang of it, and then depends on how far you want to go. You book a three, six, or twelve months uh, uh, coaching program, and then you afterwards you can do it on your own. And you just eventually when you when you when, when something comes up that you can't do on your own, you just look for a therapist. Mm-hmm. Um, that's good to know. So you got you do you do you do coaching that's three, six, and twelve. 
Yes. Yes. Okay. What are the things that there's, there's there's a basic when, when where you get like the silent mind and the inner peace and then you stop doing it and then you go more and more and more if you want to continue. But it's already great to 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 have silent mind and inner peace. Which is a really nice way to live. Yeah. So that's part of that inner inner work. Um I hope that question is answered with the inner work, or is there something else in the question? Um, there's always going to be something more. I mean, it's a big topic because, because, uh, I mean, we can talk about this like other times and stuff. I'm sure it's going to come up. Um, but yeah, I mean, cause there's so many, there's so many roads, right? There's like, there's inner child work, there's shadow work, there's a uh, dream work, you know? And like, they all try to experience there's peak stage. Yeah, there's, 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 I don't know, EFT, there's, there's yeah, so primal many primal breath work. Work, psychotherapy yes. yeah yes, yes. yeah there's so many out there but like you said they ultimately they they all have they're all trying to they all share some of the same things and um do you think do you th okay I'll, I'll ask you this question do you think that eventually there will be one therapy that works for everyone and not because everybody like you know everybody's different Everybody has different things that might prevent them, but because the route to healing has to become scientific, as scientific as possible. It has to have a model that will consistently work for everyone. Um, and, you know, if you want to look at it, looking at it from like a, a very medical perspective, like, um, you know, like, okay, like if injections or you know they had to go through like the bloodstream to get medicine always and we were always just like poking at like i don't know like just putting the needle in the wrong places and sometimes it was working and sometimes it wasn't and you're like okay well we know it's, it has to be in the body but we, like people don't know it had to be in like the bloodstream through a vein etc like do you think eventually there will become a, there will be a, a very very highly specific model that it, that will um, apply to everyone or do you think just people are different and you find different ways to get to the same kind of solutions i hope i hope i mean it would be nice to have the same uh, words and then translate these words to different languages and then have the same word terminology being used but yeah. since the experience is so subjective that some people have and and okay, you, you will find clients and people, uh, patients that talk about trauma or that talk about psychosis. They're using these words, but it's not the medical definition. Okay, so yeah, there's, yeah. there's always, you have to always add like this trans, transcription, trans interpretation step that, that you say, okay, that person is using psychosis. What does that person mean? Yeah, and that person is using trauma. What does that person really mean? Explain. Yeah. Okay, and then you basically come and, and put it in your own words into your own categories and try to find actually the root cause. And the beauty with the uh, Institute for the Study of Peak States, and that's basically one of the fundamental reasons why I'm, I'm, I'm still with them and working with them, is that there is a model, it is a scientific model. They tested it, they validated it with many people and with many, um, not with everybody. And that's but the same with medical drugs, okay? They're not yeah. tested with everybody. And, um, and, and you don't necessarily need to do peak states therapy. So the therapy, the tapping therapy, um, you can use whatever other kind of therapy applying the model. So the model is on top, explaining about the primary cell and how they interact all these parts. And then below is the peak states therapy explaining what to do if that happens and that happens. But if you can just take that out and put somatic experience or inner child work or whatever in, and the, the requirement is that actually that method heals a trauma and brings you to that calm, peaceful, and emotionally light state. And you can use whatever technique, and that's fine. And you still apply the model. And that is, that is like the first thing that I've seen, that the technique and the model are not necessarily one. Okay, with Yeah, they're not exclusive, things. mutually yes. exclusive. With, with many other techniques, if you go into psycho... Um, psychoanalytics analytics or so that they, they there's always the model and the, the the method basically linked together and here it's ex exchangeable okay and that is that is really cool okay. and um but still it's 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 very difficult there are people who who don't want to be explored okay so if i ask you how do you feel and you say good 
and say, okay, but you're crying. How do you feel good? It's going to be really difficult because it's not you feel good. That you're crying before because you feel good because something is going on. But if you're not willing to look inside, it's really difficult to help you. And then it's always easier to just give you a pill, okay? The pill always yeah. works or the injection always works. But I think over time, people get more and more familiar that there are techniques that not necessarily are invasive. Okay, also pill is invasive. You take something inside of your body, okay? And you change and your chemistry as well. The chemistry and, and the injection, of course, is invasive. And that you just by applying certain techniques, looking in the right places inside of you, you doing it in a certain descriptive way, uh, a specific way um, that you... Um, basically can heal um, issues. But you should start early. I mean, there's, there can be like, these issues can stick up. One issue, yeah. another issue at the top, and avoiding this and avoiding that, and then overcompensating that and surrendering to that and so on. And now you have a stack of issues that cause perhaps a panic attack. And then if I go and work on this issue, on this issue, this whole stack still is there, okay? And if that stack is there, I have to work on everything to get to that calm, peaceful, and emotionally light state. Yeah. Um, so, um, I mean, you already said it, I mean, I'm glad you can help a lot of people with this. I mean, I work with you. I think it's great. Um, what, what tools are necessary for somebody to, this is my last question that I have so that we can wrap this whole idea of doing inner work. Um, you know, if you feel like you're, you know, having panic attacks or you're dealing with stuff or you feel like you're ready to work on this stuff, what are some necessary tools for you to feel like working with whether it's you or another therapist what are tools that you feel like a therapist needs to have in order for you to know you're doing this work well i think the about the therapist we should do another uh, uh, episode because that's that's a long topic what's who, who, which therapist to choose and so on but basically sure. the one you feel safe with that's that's the most important thing okay that's to to wrap it up in one sentence choose the therapist you feel safe with and um, and then what tools? Basically, if you can watch this, you have most of the tools available. Headset would be nice. And then you have some sort of computer with a camera, with an internet connection. That's something you, you need, at least. Of course, there's the premium variant that you go to a therapist's office and you do an in-person uh, session. But it's not necessarily, um, uh, well, it's not necessary and uh, depends really on the issues you're having. And if you're really mentally very well, uh, very, very um, unstable, then it's better you do it in an office or even perhaps in an, in an inpatient clinic or something like this where you, um, um, or perhaps outpatient, that depends really, okay, on, on the issue. But the earlier you start, so when you teach your children already some basic things, and there are nice books out there, if you, just to look at the emotion and work with the emotion, and you start early in your 20s, in your 30s, you might prevent of something stacking up and then to get unstable, okay? But the longer yeah. you wait, yeah. you basically it's it's more problematic. I have patients that are 77 years old and they still can work, but it's, of course, there's life experience and I've always done it this way and this is something they would need to give up. And when you're at the end of your life, basically, or your perceived end of your life, mm -hmm. you don't know if they're going to live 20 more years, <laughs> okay? With 77, yeah. everything is possible. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's very difficult to, to say, okay, I'll let go of this now. Okay, I did this like 50 years, longer than I'm alive on this world, okay? And I'm telling them to stop doing it and just do something else. And um, it's like, ah, oh, okay, but if they can jump over that shadow basically and uh, just do it, then there's there's some improvement. That's great. There's hope for great. us all. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much for that uh, awesome question and then and, and setting this up. And uh, I think we'll continue with uh, more questions and... Uh, all right, See you great. Next time. Then next That's Sunday. great. Okay, well, you have a good uh, good night. <laughs> yes, thank you. Have a beautiful afternoon for you. <laughs> Thanks, Daniel. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.